Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today, finally, I get to take out some of my dry-aged beef. I got my top sirloin, it's ready to come out. It's been in at 31 days. It's looking pretty good. I just took it off the, took it out of the refrigerator here. It's still in the my bag. Give me two seconds, and I'm gonna get it out of this bag, and we're gonna look at it and see how it turned out. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm excited. This is the first time I've ever uh, attempted to dry age beef at all um, at home. These on my bags are pretty simple to use if you follow the directions right, and from what I can see, it looks like it turned out pretty good from what the bag's looking like. I don't see any mold or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's kind of a solid, um, you know, uh, outside edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this and just see what it looks like when we get into it here. From all the other videos and stuff I've seen on these, is it, it's just gonna peel away. It's gonna be really tight to the meat but it's just gonna kind of peel away just like this it should just pop right out and I can tell right now it's lost some weight I should have done a scale weight to this before I put it in so we could do a comparison but ah well Maybe next time I'll do the weight comparison. Just want to get the bag out of the way. And like I said, it looks pretty awesome. Now there it is, I can see just a little tiny bit of um, white mold on here, I guess. But that's um, kind of normal from what I understand because the mold's kind of what gives it some of that uh, umai flavor. But just feeling this, it feels kind of like uh, beef jerky feels. It's um, still a little bit pliable, but it's kind of hard on the outside. It's like it's been coated in beef jerky or something. But um, the uh, fat feels kind of hard here on the outside. And uh, this, yeah, it just kind of feels like it's got a hard candy shell on it. But. Um, no real kind of odd smell that I can smell. It doesn't uh, smells kind of like beef jerky would. I'm gonna go ahead. I can't wait anymore, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right in half. I'm not gonna trim it up first. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right in half, and probably cut it into steaks after that before we trim it up anymore. Because like I said this is a top sirloin, and right at 31 days, so. I'm going to go ahead and cut it right in half. And you want to, when you're cutting this, you want to have a big knife because you want to be able to cut it in one swoop. And there it is, guys. Take a look at that. I'll make sure you can see it real well. It looks pretty awesome. You can see the fat in there. This is a choice top sirloin. So it uh, looks pretty awesome. I do say so myself. You can tell it did lose a lot of moisture. It lost some weight to it. And uh, I'm going to cook a couple of these steaks up for dinner tonight. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to finish cutting them. And I think I'm just going to do like, uh, like I normally would, like a two two finger steak. So right about, you know, an inch and a half or so. Yeah, right at about an inch and a half. And we're going to sous vide these too. So there you go. That's one steak. Not too thick. And that feels feels dense, but um, it's not moist at all. I mean, it's not bleeding any myoglobin or blood out at all. 
All right, guys, I'm going to show you how I'm going to trim this up. See, since we cut this, really all we have to trim is the outside part. And I'm not going to trim a ton of it. Just, I'm just going to go in just kind of where it kind of discolored the most. And just, just kind of trim this part. It's kind of the hard part. Now, don't throw this stuff out. It's good. Um, I'm going to actually use this in another video down the road where I'm going to um, grind this up and do some uh, with some other meat for burgers. So it's really good to make some dry aged burgers with. So save all those. And when you got a big chunk of fat like here, you can go ahead and remove most of that fat just like that. I'm going to get up to where it's meat. You don't want to remove a whole lot of the meat. You just want to get that just where it's discolored. So it's just like right there. You can see. Probably just trim it up just a little bit more. Just enough. As you can see there. I already trimmed a little bit off of that fat. And that's it. And that's what it looks like when it's all trimmed and ready to be go. Oh, let's get a little bit more on this side. Just right here where it's just discolored. Because that's going to be kind of chewy. So there you go. And that's going to be one of our steaks for dinner tonight. Alright, y'all. I got the ones that I'm going to cook up for dinner tonight. This here, this uh, uh, trimmings, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in a vacuum seal bag and then maybe next week for a video I'm going to show you how to grind that up mixed in with some, probably going to do some eye round, either that or uh, I have a sirloin tip roast I'm going to use to mix in with this and some leftover brisket fat, kind of make some awesome uh, dry aged burgers. But for now, for these steaks, I got the ones out that we're going to have for dinner tonight. And I'm just going to use my regular beef grub, salt, pepper, garlic. It's just a nice light coat. I'm not going to heavily season these because I don't want it to overpower the taste of the dry age. So just a nice base coat. And that's it. I mean, just a light coating of salt, pepper, and garlic. I'm going to get these in the vacuum bag and then we're going to toss them in the sous vide. I'll be right back. All right, this is going to be a fast one, guys. I pulled the steaks out of the sous vide. They were in there at 131 for about an hour and a half. I didn't want to go too long. So what I'm going to do, I got five steaks here. And what I'm going to do is two of them, I'm going to do the mayo sear. Two of them, I'm going to do duck fat. And one of them, the big one here, I'm just going to leave plain. So we're going to try a couple different things, oils here to sear with. And with the mayo sear, I see a lot of people trying this on the Facebook groups. And they slather a whole bunch of <laughs> chunks of mayo on it. What you really need to do is you treat it just like any other oil. And you just take a, paste, a, a basting brush and just brush a nice, you know, even thin coat of mayo on there. Because you want it to be just like an oil. You don't want it to have a big, thick, nasty crust. Because that's what it can do. It can crust up and kind of be like a chicken fried steak if you use too much. So we're just going to paint a nice thin coat. We don't want it clumpy or any of that. So just just like you're painting on some paint. Just like that. And then the other two here, we're going to do just the spray duck fat on each side. I've already patted these dry. So, And that one in the middle is just going to stay the way it is. You add just a tiny bit more of my... Um, beef seasoning not a ton just a little bit just to kind of help with any that may have came off in the sous vide bag that's it i'll be right back guys all right guys the kamado joe classic 2 is fired up to about 400 degrees showing on the dome thermometer probably a little hotter than that 
We're gonna do two of these steaks, one of the mayo, one of the duck fat on the uh, Kamado Joe soapstone to see about getting a good flat sear on that. And the other two we're gonna do directly over the coals, plus the plain one will go over directly over the coals. See if we can get some grill, grill grate marks on those. We're not gonna do but about a minute on each side because we don't wanna overcook these. So it uh, will turn out pretty good. Let's see how this goes. Got some nice flame going. All right, I'll see you guys inside. All right, guys, we got our steaks all done. They're all ready. All right, these are the ones that were cooked on the over the direct heat on the grill. These are the ones that were on the uh, uh, Kamado Joe soapstone. This one here was the mayo. That's the duck fat. Mayo, duck fat. Plain Jane. So let's start with the uh, duck fat on the soapstone. You can see it's still still medium rare there. Mm. Tender. And you can tell it's dry aged. Mm. You can tell it's got a nice sear to it. Nice and crunchy actually. Let's try the uh, mayo sear again. Tell it's nice and medium rare. Man, this dry aged steak is awesome. You need to try these in my bags. Mm. Well, I can tell that's got a pretty good sear too. Between the two of these, you really can't tell a whole lot of difference. So using mayo or duck fat is probably that's a you know give or take. Doesn't really seem like it made much difference. Now those are the ones directly over the coals. This kind of was a little thinner here. Let's try that. Definitely can taste the charcoal. Has a good sear to it. Let's try the duck fat. Once again, you really can't taste much difference between the duck fat and the mayo sear on either one of these. These you can definitely taste the charcoal flavor. These uh, have a more uniform sear, I guess, on them. Very good. I love this uh, dry age stuff. You guys got to try it. Thanks for watching. Check out those Umai dry bags. There will be a link in the uh, description below. Like us on Facebook, Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on our Facebook group. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.